Tonight on the MTN News, calling for a cap. I fully respect what Montana does with this. I just hope Montana does this with the appropriate information and enough from both sides. Why one man wants leaders to consider the amount of THC allowed in Montana marijuana products. Also, scammers on the prowl. This one was different in the sense that they had so much of my information. One man's warning about a Medicare scam that he nearly fell for. And a site that had a lot of people doing a double take in Butte. An elephant on the loose. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. A lot has changed when it comes to marijuana over the years. First of all, it's now legal in 24 states, including Montana. In another 14, allow it for medical use only. It's also more powerful with the average THC in cannabis increasing over the past half century. This week, Billings City Council got an update on the community impact of legalized THC from one man who has made the subject his passion. Q2's David J talked to him and a marijuana advocate as well. We've long known that this conversation is much more around the use of THC, the psychoactive component in the cannabis plant, rather than cannabis as a whole. Ben Court talked with several groups in Billings, including the City Council on Monday night, before heading to Miles City on Tuesday. The biggest hope that I have for Montana is that you uh, consider potency caps. Right now, there's absolutely no limit on how strong the products can be. Cord is the CEO of NRT Behavior Health in Colorado. He would like to see caps on THC because of what he sees and people he tries to help. Everything from depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, all the way up through the extreme forms of schizophrenia, seeing and hearing things that nobody else is, um, extreme paranoia. 406 Organics is a marijuana dispensary halfway between Billings and Roundup on Highway 87. While it's outside the city limits, the owner here is also the founder of the Montana Cannabis Industry Association, and he has concerns about the talk about putting a cap on THC. Product information that you give to the consumers, they make a more balanced choice. And so it's not necessarily about the potency or the effect that comes out just from THC. Nathan Pierce owns 406 Organics. He also disagrees with court about mental health issues in marijuana. There's quite a few factors that could play into effect that cannabis may be attributed to, but that actually isn't the core reason for the psychosis or the mental issues that the persons are dealing with. Cord helps people trying to overcome addictions, and he recovered from marijuana addiction in 1996. The majority of people in my life I went through this with um, are no longer alive. Councilman Tom Rupsis says he supports legalization of marijuana, but says it should be in a regulated environment with control over dosages for medical marijuana. And he said he would support THC caps. Rupsis also hopes to propose an ordinance by this summer. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Many students continue to deal with mounting mental health issues, and districts are searching for ways to better support students and staff. Arlena Howder takes us to Hardin Schools, where a new approach to mental health could save lives in our most vulnerable communities. Next time you're around five high schoolers, chances are that two of them are battling feelings of depression. According to the CDC, 42% of high schoolers reported feeling sad or hopeless within the last year. It's why the Hardin School Administration is making mental health care their number one priority in more ways than one. 16-year-old Hardin High sophomore Lauren Krebs looks like a typical student on the outside. I like to work out, read, write poetry. But on the inside? I've had problems with mental health for like a long time. Um, it's been a struggle to deal with it and cope with it in my life. Lauren's not alone. According to OPI's 2023 Youth Risk Behavior Survey, 25.7% of Montana students seriously considered attempting suicide, while 22% of students actually made a suicide plan. We've also had a student attempt this year and one student that did complete this year. So. Um, so we need all the support that we can get. Hardin High Principal Deanna Albert says almost every problem has one thing in common. We have fights that start over social media, you know, physical fights within the school. We see kids just being bullied through social media. 
that's really where 90% of our issues come from. The school's newest effort to help? Superintendent Tobin Navagio has implemented the Hope Squad, a peer support network where students are trained to be the first layer of detection for kids that are struggling. QPR is a similar resource. Question, persuade, refer, it's, it's, it's really viewed as like a mental health um, CPR. The Hardin School Administration has also partnered with the Jed Foundation. They provide mental health support services. Uh, they actually stemmed from a uh, suicide at the collegiate level. But it's really nice for us as being able to tap into their expertise. It's something that gives teens like Lauren hope for the future. Whenever I am on Hope Squad next year, I just want to make feel, people feel like they're not alone. I may look normal on the outside and fine, but there's you never really know what's going on under the surface, and it's not a bad thing to have a mental health issue. In Hardin, Alina Howder, MTN News. Sabanye, Stillwater officials say test results are back after trace amounts of mercury were found at the East Boulder Mine south of Big Timber, and miners will be heading back to work. The mine halted operations Friday after sensors worn by several employees detected the mercury. Mine officials say the results show mercury vapor well below regulatory limits and employees are being sent back to work. Tonight's shift was voluntary, but tomorrow's day shift is required. Two animal welfare groups are now offering a combined $20,000 in reward money for any information that might lead to stronger penalties against a Wyoming man accused of capturing and torturing a wolf pup. As we first reported Sunday, Cody Roberts was fined $250 by the state for illegal possession of a live wolf. The 42-year-old allegedly took the animal to a bar where he showed it off to customers after taping its mouth shut and then killed the wolf. Pictures and videos of the incident on social media prompted an outcry from people across the country, many demanding harsher penalties. The Center for a Humane Economy is offering a reward of $15,000, while Wolves of the Rockies is putting up another $5,000. PETA claims that an elephant that broke loose from a traveling circus in Butte had escaped at least two other times. The elephant temporarily got loose from the Jordan World Circus, the circus says the elephant handlers were washing the female elephant outside the Civic Center when a passing vehicle backfired and spooked the animal. The elephant ran across Harrison Avenue, stopping traffic while a handler ran after it, and it was eventually corralled. The animal rights group says that circus that supplies Jordan World Circus has been cited for more than 100 violations of the Animal Welfare Act. Here we go with the Stockman Bank weather cam, and we've got rain here in Billings. Look out towards uh, King Avenue West, and you can see some pretty good showers that have been moving through here in the last short while, and the temperatures are steadily decreasing. Now, there's a pocket of a bit heavier rain. You see that around Laurel pushing out towards Billings right now, so you can see the intensity start to pick up here on the West End in just a very short time. Meanwhile, as we take a look out towards Carbon County and down the road from Columbus off to the west and south, you see where it's quickly changing changing over from rain to snow and that's going to happen in the Billings area as we start getting to around midnight and into the overnight. The heavier snow in the blue shaded areas, some areas of snow and blowing snow in the mountain foothills up to 18 inches into the high elevations. Senate Republicans are still trying to figure out a way to force Democrats in the Senate to take up the trial of Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas after he was impeached over his handling of the border. Impeachment managers made the ceremonial walk from the U.S. House to the Senate, delivering articles of impeachment against Mayorkas. House Republicans accused Mayorkas of not enforcing federal immigration laws and breaching public trust. The Biden administration calls the impeachment effort baseless and urges Republicans to pass legislation to help secure the border. Montana's U.S. Senate race between incumbent John Tester and Tim Sheehy will undoubtedly be one of the most watched Senate races this fall. It's also shaping up to be a record-breaking race for the state as far as fundraising. Democrat John Tester's campaign brought in just over $8 million in the first quarter of the year. They spent almost $6.6 million, but still had more than $12.6 million in the bank at the start of April. Republican challenger Tim Shee raised more than $3 million in the first quarter, including a $500,000 loan of his own money. His campaign spent $2.4 million and still had a little under $2 million on hand. 
Well, scammers are working harder than ever these days to get their hands on your money or your personal information. One Billings man nearly fell for one of these scams. As Haley Monaco reports tonight, he contacted Q2 because he wants to make sure that no one else falls victim. It was a normal start of the week for 69-year-old Kimmerd Kuneman until his phone rang and he almost gave out personal information from his Medicare card. It was a uh, 253, I believe, area code. Not knowing who was on the other end of the call, Kuneman picked up. I had a hard time understanding them. The caller claimed to be with Medicare. They had a lot of my personal information, my date of birth, my address. Kuneman believed the caller was who they claimed to be until they asked him for the date he received his Medicare card. This is when he got suspicious and told the caller they should already have that information. So I put them on the spot and they said, yeah, we got it on two of 20. And I looked at my card and it was not that, so I knew it was a scam. The whole situation left Kuneman feeling agitated and wants to warn others about the call and how different it felt because of how much information they already knew about him. There's too many people getting taken advantage of. And when you get our age, you know, we, we don't have a very limited income and it's hard for us to make up whatever they take away from you. A good reminder to not give out personal information to someone soliciting it from you over the phone. Banks and government agencies will never call to ask for personal information. There's almost no reason for Medicare to call you. Just got to be really careful. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2, a Billings dad on a mission to make sure that all student lunch debt in School District 2 is paid up. And later three Billings teachers in the running for a national honor.